Hi there, I'm Dr. Brett Schur, the low carb cardiologist, and I wanted to talk about a couple of common questions that I get regarding low carb lifestyle versus a ketogenic lifestyle and exactly what the role of fat is in those diets. So first, a couple definitions. A ketogenic diet is any diet in which your body is producing ketones for fuel. Now, usually that involves a very low level of carbohydrates, less than 30 grams in most people. Some people can be ketogenic up to 50 grams, some even as high as maybe 70 grams, dependent on your level of physical activity and just some natural parts of your body, how you metabolize carbohydrates. But for most people, it's gonna be less than 30 grams of carbohydrates. Now, comparing that to a low carb diet, Low carb can be anywhere 50, 75, 100, maybe even 150 grams, again, for some people, depending on your metabolic health and your physical activities. So one of the big questions I get is, well, do I have to go full ketogenic or is low carb good enough? And the answer, of course, is it depends, right? There's no one right answer for everybody. But the first answer is any of that is better than the standard American diet, which has 250, 300, or even more grams of carbohydrates. That's the diet that's gotten us into this obesity and diabetes epidemic, probably even contributing to worsening coronary disease and Alzheimer's dementia and more. So that's the diet that's gotten us into trouble. So 150, 100 grams of carbohydrates a day, a definite improvement. But the question is, what's your goal? What are you trying to achieve by lowering your carbohydrates? So if you have disordered metabolism, you already have diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, or you're overweight really looking to lose weight safely and quickly and for the long term, that's the population that's gonna benefit most from a ketogenic diet. Being stricter, lowering your carbohydrates, um, and you're gonna see the biggest effect in that population. Now, interestingly, another population that can benefit is endurance athletics, because endurance athletes can really go longer, faster, uh, and feel better when you're burning your own fat and you're using ketones for fuel. So endurance athletes may also wanna go ketogenic, although they can cycle their carbohydrates with their training, uh, depending on what their goals are for their day. But for the most part, like I said, diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, or overweight looking to lose weight quickly and safely and long-term, ketogenic diet is great. For other people looking to be healthy, lose a little bit of weight, um, prevent diabetes, insulin resistance, prevent heart disease, prevent the onset dementia, for them, low carb might be enough. You might not have to go all the way to ketogenic. The key is though, to not just try it blindly and just see what happens and guess. The key is to document as much as you can, whether it's your weight, your waist circumference, your body fat and lean body mass, following your blood work, specifically your A1C, your insulin levels, your lipids, uh, specifically triglycerides and HDL. Getting as much objective evidence as you can to see how you do on low carb versus a ketogenic and experiment with it. I love people turning themselves in their own N of one experiment. And I think that's where you learn the most about work, what works for you. I can give general guidelines all day long, but the key is what's gonna work for you. And that's where a ketone monitor, a blood glucose monitor can be very helpful. Just a little word of caution, cycling in and out of ketosis can be problematic for some. Some people do it with no problem, but some are gonna feel awful every time they go in and out of ketosis because there's that initial, what they call keto flu or carb flu, where your body's basically detoxing from the carbohydrates. So certainly the first time you do it, you're probably gonna not feel so great for the first couple days to a week. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Really stay well hydrated with lots of electrolytes. And if you cycle in and out and you're feeling that way every time you cycle in and out, then you're probably best going way into ketosis and staying there or staying low carb and not going back and forth. But some people, like I said, do cycle. So in summary, the main difference between low carb and ketogenic diet, of course, is the exact number of carbs, either as a dramatic improvement over the standard American diet. If you're treating diabetes, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, you're probably best off going ketogenic. If you just want to experiment and see how you feel lowering your carbs and want to do it slowly, then a low carb approach is absolutely, absolutely a reasonable thing to do. So hope that helps. It's very basic. 
can kind of get you started. If you want to learn more, go to my website, lowcarbcardiologist.com. A lot of information out there, whether it's on my podcast or my blog, uh, my books or my free downloads. Just take advantage of all that. Learn as much as you can and let me know how I can help you. I want to help you on your path to health and, and see what's right for you. All right. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.